For years now, Apple's iOS devices have been popular with musicians. They're portable and easy to use, meaning that you can create music on the go. But of course, like anything, they come with their fair share of pros and cons, and we would be lying if we said that it doesn't have its fair share of sacrifices. So in this video, we'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using an iOS device for your music production needs. Now we at iPadBeatMaking.com are all in. Everything we do is on iOS, so if you enjoy this video, please hit the like button, and if you want to learn how to start making beats, get the latest news, updates, sales, and more, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now without wasting any more time, let's start with the pros. One of the many pros of iOS music production is that you can create your own beats and melodies on the go. Imagine being able to create music on your phone in any location at any time. With the right app, you can make beats and make songs from all corners of the world with just a few taps or swipes. Whether it's while you're out traveling or working on school or have work deadlines bearing down, now there's never a good excuse not to be productive. You don't need to lug around a laptop or desktop computer, which is great for musicians who are constantly on the move. The music studio is now in the palm of your hand, and with thousands of apps available, you can be more creative than ever before, no matter where you are. iOS is easy to use. It's not as complicated to use iOS as it is to use other devices such as laptops and desktop computers. Seriously, there's no tedious settings to work through. Things on iOS just work. iOS is cheaper. It's much more affordable to buy an iPhone than it would be to buy a laptop or desktop computer. For example, the cheapest MacBook starts at about $999, where you can get your hands on one of Apple's latest iPhones for as little as like $699. And there are constantly deals with phone companies where you can do BOGOs, which are buy one get one freeze. And don't even get me started on the older iPhones and those on the used market. So this means if money is tight, you no longer need to choose between a mobile device and a music production platform. Now you can have both. iOS offers a variety of apps that are free or very inexpensive so that you don't have to spend much money on music production software and equipment. For instance, GarageBand has more than enough to get started with and it's totally free, but you've also got apps like AUM, Nano Studio 2, Beatmaker 3, and Cubasis 3 that can help you take your productions to the next level. AUV3s now, AUV3s, or Audio Unit version 3, are basically like the iOS version of VSTs, AAX, or Audio Units on Desktop. And we've got some incredible apps on iOS that are direct ports from desktop. For instance, we've got most of the FabFilter plugins on iOS, and when compared to the price of the desktop versions, they're a steal. You can literally get them all for like the same price as a single plugin on desktop. We've also got the acclaimed Mixbox CS by IK Multimedia, Tone Booster suite of plugins, and so much more. You can make your setup as simple or as complex as you like. Go with just your internal speakers on your iDevice, or plug in headphones, or you can connect an interface for that high quality A to D and D to A, as well as preamps. In terms of actually playing sounds, you can use just the touchscreen of your device, or you can connect a MIDI controller. Now, iOS is not the most powerful platform for music production, but it does have some great apps available to make great sounding tracks and produce professional quality songs with ease when used in conjunction with different tools at once that are all designed specifically around iOS's unique approach to do things with sharing between apps in mind. For instance, you can generate some MIDI with song in and then send it to a DAW like Nano Studio 2 instantly and then drag and drop it onto the timeline with ease. This is just one example, but there's no software ecosystem built to be as modular with different apps when it comes to music as iOS. And finally, it's a new frontier. There's no rules to iOS music making, and developers have come up with some crazy ways to make music apps that are as unique as iOS itself. So those are some of the beautiful things about iOS, but like anything, there's gonna be some downsides, and here are a few of the cons. The first con that some would say is that iOS is not for pros. See what we did there? But seriously, since it's a new frontier, there isn't actually an established history and formats and methods like there are on desktop. Things change on iOS from one week to the next, and every three to four months is the equivalent of like a year of desktop app development. Things just move so quick. 
you find the latest app that you hear about today completely makes the app you were using yesterday obsolete. So it really is the wild, wild west. And that could be a good thing for some, but it definitely could be a bad thing for others, especially artists who like a certain workflow and especially a studio who relies on being able to count on things to just work. So in other words, steer clear if you're afraid of new things or can't afford for things to act unpredictably at times. Apps are definitely not as powerful on iOS as they are on laptops or desktop computers. So if you do more complicated things in your composition, then iOS might feel just a bit limited. And following that up, another con about using an iPhone or iPad for producing beats would be the lack of desktop class DAWs. You'll find no Pro Tools, Logic, or Ableton Live here. And although there are some really good iOS music production apps on the App Store, none of them are as fully featured as those available on the desktop. Another con of using an iPhone for producing beats would be the lack of the most popular desktop class virtual instruments, or VSTs. This is one of the shortcomings of using an iPhone or an iPad for creating beats because Many people find it difficult to produce quality music without desktop class virtual instruments. This means you won't have access to high quality sounds in Serum, Nexus, Native Instruments, and so much more. Another con could potentially be just how small the keys feel under your fingers while composing melodies on say an iPhone or a smaller size iPad. So it may take a while to get used to. If you're ever able to get used to it, you're just not gonna be able to articulate the velocities and things like that that you can on a physical MIDI controller iOS devices are more than capable of doing some pretty cool stuff, but let's face it, you may not have the same amount of power and versatility with iOS devices as you would on a laptop or a desktop computer, especially with power intensive AEV3s. And even in the world of AEV3, things aren't exactly an exact science. Some have sample rate issues, some don't reliably bounce or freeze, just ask any iOS producer and I'm sure they'll have some crazy story about something going crazy on iOS. Not all audio interfaces work with iOS and worse yet, you'll likely forfeit any plugins, DAWs and low latency audio drivers compared to that of desktop or laptops. Just giving you one example, my beloved Apogee Duet for iOS doesn't work with the USB-C models of the iPads, and even though the latest Symphony desktop interface will, you'll be forfeiting those lovely Apogee plugins if you bought the bundle. Antelope interfaces are in the same boat. They'll work, but all that onboard DSP is going to waste since it's not compatible with iOS. Oh, and your favorite industry standard UAD interfaces? Forget about it, they won't work at all. So that's something to seriously consider before jumping into iOS music production. Ports, the lack of ports. Although you can connect hubs, especially with the USB-C iOS devices, nothing can quite prepare you for the lack of ports on iOS devices. And lightning is just limited. Sure, you can use the camera connection kit to connect class compliant devices, etc., but that is a far cry from the capabilities of USB-C. And not even that compares to a computer with multiple ports and Thunderbolt 3 ports. Bottom line, if you need your ports, stay far, far away. And finally, iOS itself is horrible with the sometimes forced or accidental updates. And not only that, they're only a one-way trip. If you accidentally hit that update button and you've updated your device and things don't work like you hoped, tough luck. Add that to the fact that iOS can be extremely temperamental with AEV3 plugins and that things are unpredictable with every major update and you can literally lose your music production setup in an instant. And Apple will fix it, if they fix it at all, whenever they feel like fixing it. So due to this reality, it's not unheard of for some music makers to be several major iOS versions behind, such as iOS 12 or iOS 13. And while they may have a stable setup if they never update, they also don't get the latest iOS features and many apps require the latest iOS version in order to work. So there you have it, a list of some pros and cons for iOS music production. What's your thoughts on it? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What would you change? What would you add? Let us know down in the comments section below. 
We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please be sure to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the latest news, tips, tricks, sales, beats, reviews, updates, and more. And be sure to check out some of the best kits for iOS at iPadBeatMaking.com. It's iPadBeatMaking.com. Peace.